a camping experience that turned into a wild adventure in the Black Hills. It was late spring, a time when the weather can surprise you, and we were all set for a peaceful night under the stars. Little did we know, nature had a different plan in store for us. We found a remote spot in the Black Hills to set up camp. The air was crisp, and the scent of pine filled our noses as we pitched our tent on a flat spot, excited for a night of camping bliss. The campfire crackled to life, and we settled in, chatting and enjoying the tranquility of the wilderness. But as night fell, the temperature dropped, and soon enough, snowflakes began to drift down from the sky. At first, it was magical, the gentle snowfall adding a serene touch to our camping experience. We huddled closer to the fire, savoring the warmth and the beauty of nature's unexpected gift. As the night wore on, the snowfall grew heavier, and the tranquility turned into concern. Our tent, while sturdy, wasn't exactly designed for a snowstorm. We listened to the muffled sounds of snowflakes hitting the tent fabric, hoping it would hold up. Then came the moment that shook us awake, a loud thud that seemed to echo through the ground. It was a sound that instantly raised our adrenaline levels, our minds racing through possibilities of what could have caused it. Carefully unzipping the tent, we peered outside into a world transformed by snow. The darkness made it hard to see at first, but as our eyes adjusted, we saw the massive cottonwood limb that had fallen just a few feet from our tent. This wasn't a small branch. We're talking about a massive limb, almost a foot and a half in diameter. It had come crashing down under the weight of the wet snow, landing dangerously close to where our heads would have been if we had set up the tent just a bit differently. The realization hit us like a ton of bricks. If we had chosen to pitch our tent on the other side of the tent pad or even a few inches in another direction, that limb would have landed right on top of us. It was a chilling thought that made us appreciate the randomness of nature and the fine line between safety and danger. Fear gripped us as we assessed the situation. The limb had missed us, but it was a stark reminder of how quickly things can turn dangerous in the wilderness. With the snow still falling steadily, we knew we had to make a decision, stay and risk more falling branches or pack up and leave. We opted for the latter, not wanting to tempt fate any further. Packing up in a hurry, we secured our gear and made our way back to civilization, navigating carefully through the snowy terrain. The drive back was a mix of relief and reflection. We talked about how lucky we were and how important it is to respect nature's power. It wasn't about being scared of camping again but rather being more aware and prepared for unexpected challenges. That night in the Black Hills became a story we shared with friends and family, a tale of adventure and a close call with danger. It taught us valuable lessons about camping safety, from choosing the right campsite to being vigilant about changing weather conditions. Looking back, we're grateful for the experience, as nerve-wracking as it was. It reminded us of nature's raw power and the importance of making smart decisions in outdoor adventures. And while we still love camping, we now approach it with a healthy dose of caution and respect for the unpredictable forces of the wild. Camping that tested my resilience and taught me valuable lessons about being prepared in the wilderness. Last summer, I embarked on an adventure to camp at a staggering altitude of 12,300 feet on Uncompahgre Peak in western Colorado. The setting was breathtaking with sweeping views of rugged mountains and vast expanses of wilderness. The journey to my chosen campsite was no walk in the park. I had to hike six miles, navigating challenging terrain and crossing two streams along the way. But the promise of a night under the stars in such a pristine environment made every step worth it. As evening descended, I set up my camp, feeling a sense of accomplishment and excitement. The weather had been pleasant all day, and I expected a relatively mild night ahead. However, mountain weather is known for its unpredictability, and I was about to experience it firsthand. Nightfall brought a noticeable drop in temperature, catching me off guard. I had packed a sleeping bag rated for survival at 50 degrees Fahrenheit, 
confident that the clear skies would keep temperatures above that mark. But nature had other plans. My thermometer revealed that the nighttime temperature had dipped to around 35 degrees Fahrenheit. Realization dawned on me. I was ill-prepared for the cold night ahead. The discrepancy between my sleeping bag rating and the actual temperature sent a wave of concern through me. I knew I had to improvise to stay warm through the night. Desperate times call for desperate measures, they say. I resorted to doing push-ups inside my tent, hoping to generate enough body heat to ward off the cold. It was a makeshift solution born out of necessity, and while it helped a bit, it wasn't enough to ensure a comfortable night's sleep. As the night wore on, sleep remained elusive. Every creak of the tent fabric in the wind or distant sound magnified my sense of vulnerability. The solitude of the mountains, while serene during the day, took on a more daunting aspect in the dark, cold night. Paranoia crept in, fueled by exhaustion and the unfamiliar sounds of the wilderness. I imagined thunder rumbling in the distance and the rustling of unseen creatures, heightening my sense of unease. Looking back, I realized that fear can distort reality, making harmless noises seem ominous. Amidst the sleepless hours and the battle to stay warm, I couldn't help but reflect on my choices. I chastised myself for not double-checking the nighttime conditions more thoroughly. It was a valuable lesson in the importance of preparedness and respecting nature's whims, especially in remote and challenging environments. Dawn broke, casting a warm glow over the frost-kissed landscape. The first light of morning brought both relief and a sense of urgency. I knew I had to make a decision— stay and risk further discomfort or pack up and head back down at the first light. With resolve fueled by the rising sun, I chose the latter. Breaking camp swiftly yet methodically, I packed my gear and prepared for the descent. The warmth of the morning sun was a welcome embrace, thawing my chilled bones and lifting the weight of the night's anxieties. The hike back to civilization was a mix of physical exhaustion and mental clarity. Each step down the mountain felt like a step towards safety and comfort. The expansive vistas that had captivated me on the ascent now served as a reminder of the challenges overcome and the lessons learned. As I drove away from Uncompagri Peak, the experience stayed with me, a blend of adventure, discomfort, and newfound wisdom. I vowed to always double-check my gear, anticipate changing weather conditions, and approach wilderness adventures with a healthy respect for nature's power. That night on Uncompagri Peak wasn't just about surviving the cold. It was about gaining a deeper understanding of myself and the untamed beauty of the natural world. And while I cherish the memories of that camping trip, I also carry with me the lessons that have made me a more cautious and prepared adventurer. A few summers back, my dad and I planned this camping trip way out in the Canadian wilds. Getting there was a whole adventure in itself. We rode an ATV for what felt like forever, bouncing along rugged trails, and then drove another 45 minutes in our car to reach the nearest town. From there, it was pure wilderness. We set up camp near a serene lake, the kind of place where the stars shine so bright they practically light up the night. Dad and I each had our own tents set up a bit apart, giving us some space but still close enough for comfort. The first day was all about exploring and fishing. We hiked around, checked out the nearby streams, and even caught a few trout for dinner. As evening settled in, we cooked up our fish over a crackling campfire, telling stories and enjoying the quiet beauty of nature. But then came the night, and that's when things got a bit creepy. I remember dozing off in my sleeping bag, feeling content and relaxed after a day of adventure. But then, in the dead of night, I woke up to this weird sound. At first, I thought I was dreaming, a sort of low, rhythmic sniffing sound. It was close, too close for comfort. My heart started thudding in my chest as I realized I wasn't dreaming. There were definitely creatures outside my tent, sniffing around like they were curious about something. My mind immediately went to coyotes. I'd heard stories about them being bold around campsites. Now, my tent was a tiny one-person setup. 
It was cozy for sleeping but felt like a flimsy barrier between me and whatever was out there. I stayed as still as I could, hoping they'd lose interest and go away. But they didn't. It felt like forever, lying there in the dark, listening to those creatures sniffing and shuffling around. I remember thinking, why are they so interested in my tent? It was like they knew I was in there, vulnerable and freaking out. At one point I swear I heard a soft growl, and that's when I almost lost it. My mind raced with all sorts of scenarios. What if they tried to get in? What if there were more of them lurking in the shadows? I clutched my flashlight like it was a lifeline, ready to shine it in their eyes if they came too close. But they stayed just outside, doing their creepy sniffing routine. Eventually, after what felt like hours but was probably only minutes, they moved on. The sniffing faded away, replaced by the usual sounds of the night, the wind rustling through the trees, the distant call of a night bird. I stayed frozen for a while longer, not sure if they were really gone or just waiting for me to relax. But nothing happened. I mustered up the courage to peek out of my tent, shining my flashlight around cautiously. Nothing. No glowing eyes, no shadows lurking nearby just the peaceful darkness of the forest. I tried to calm myself down, telling myself it was just wildlife being curious. Maybe they caught a whiff of our dinner and wanted a taste. But deep down, I couldn't shake off the fear. Morning came, and I emerged from my tent with a mix of relief and apprehension. The sun was rising, painting the sky with streaks of pink and orange. Dad was already up, brewing coffee and humming some old tune. I must have looked spooked because Dad raised an eyebrow and asked if everything was all right. I shrugged it off, not wanting to sound like a scaredy cat. Just heard some critters last night, I muttered, trying to play it cool. We spent the day hiking and exploring again, but my mind kept drifting back to that night. I kept looking for any signs outside my tent, footprints, disturbed leaves, anything to confirm I wasn't just imagining things. But there was nothing. No evidence except my racing heart and the memory of those eerie sounds. As we packed up to head back home, I couldn't help but feel a bit relieved. Civilization felt safer, with its streetlights and familiar noises. But a part of me also felt a twinge of disappointment. I wanted closure, some explanation for what happened that night. Years have passed since then, and I've retold that camping trip story countless times. Each time, it becomes a bit less terrifying and more of a wild tale to laugh about. But deep down, I still wonder. What were those creatures? Why did they linger outside my tent for so long? And most importantly, why did they decide to leave without a trace? Maybe it was just one of those unexplainable moments in the wild where nature decides to play tricks on our minds. Or maybe, just maybe, there's a secret lurking out there in the Canadian wilderness, waiting for the next unsuspecting camper to stumble upon. Hoosier National Forest camping trip last summer, where a seemingly normal morning turned into a nerve-wracking experience. The weekend getaway was supposed to be a break from city life a chance to unwind and enjoy nature with friends. Little did we know, our plans were about to take an unexpected turn. The setting was idyllic, a cozy campsite amidst towering trees, a crackling fire, and the aroma of freshly brewed coffee filling the air. We were in high spirits, laughing and chatting as we started our day with a warm cup of joe and the promise of adventure ahead. As we sat around the fire, enjoying the quiet morning, The tranquility was shattered by a sudden barrage of loud gunshots. It was as if the peacefulness of the forest was ripped apart by the jarring sound of gunfire echoing through the trees. The shots came in rapid succession, too close for comfort, and numbering somewhere between 12 to 15 rounds. My heart skipped a beat as I exchanged wide-eyed glances with my friends, searching for reassurance or understanding in their expressions. To my surprise, they seemed unfazed by the gunfire, chalking it up to normal woodland noises. Their casual demeanor left me feeling a knot of anxiety forming in my stomach. 
you see, despite their reassurances, something about the intensity and proximity of those gunshots didn't sit right with me. I've been camping and hiking in the backcountry for years, and never had I encountered such a situation. The contrast between my heightened alertness and my friend's nonchalant attitude left me feeling isolated in my concern. I scanned the surrounding forest, half expecting to see figures moving stealthily or signs of distress. But apart from the fading echoes of gunfire, the woods remained eerily silent, a stark contrast to the lively morning we had envisioned. As minutes ticked by, uncertainty hung heavy in the air. I couldn't shake off the feeling of being exposed, vulnerable to unknown dangers lurking just beyond our campsite. The situation demanded a decision. Should we brush off the gunshots as harmless activity or heed the warning signs and prioritize our safety? While my friends carried on with breakfast preparations and camp chores, I couldn't shake off the nagging worry. It wasn't just about my own safety but also about the responsibility I felt towards our group. Ignoring the potential risks was a gamble I wasn't willing to take. I voiced my concerns, urging my friends to consider the seriousness of the situation. It took some convincing, but eventually, they too started to feel the weight of uncertainty pressing upon us. We packed up our camp with a sense of urgency, a departure from the leisurely pace we had started the morning with. Each item stowed away was a step closer to safety, a decision reinforced by the unsettling experience of the gunshots. The hike back to civilization was a mix of relief and lingering apprehension. We retraced our steps through familiar trails, yet each rustle of leaves or distant sound made us hyper-aware of our surroundings. Reflecting on that weekend in Hoosier National Forest, it was a wake-up call, a reminder that nature's beauty can sometimes mask potential dangers. The gunfire, whether harmless target practice or a sign of something more concerning, left an indelible mark on our outdoor experiences. Since then, I've adopted a more cautious approach to camping and hiking, always prioritizing safety protocols and trusting my instincts in unfamiliar situations. It's not about succumbing to fear but rather acknowledging the reality that nature can be unpredictable, and being prepared is key to enjoying outdoor adventures responsibly. That weekend taught me valuable lessons about situational awareness, communication within a group, and the importance of listening to gut instincts. It's a story I share with fellow outdoor enthusiasts, a reminder that while nature offers incredible experiences, it's essential to respect its power and potential hazards. That was Unsettling Night at Glacier National Park, where our camping trip took an unexpected turn into a scene straight out of a suspense movie. Our choice of campground just outside the park's east entrance seemed perfect at first. The setting was picturesque, surrounded by lush greenery, and the soothing sounds of nature. We settled in comfortably, setting up our tents and gathering around a crackling campfire as evening descended. As the night grew deeper, we retreated to our respective tents, tired yet content from a day of hiking and exploring. The plan was simple, get a good night's sleep to recharge for another day of adventures. Little did we know, nature had a different plan for us that night. Around 2.30 a.m., Sleep still embracing us, we were rudely awakened by a series of rapid gunshots echoing across the river near our campground. The shots were loud, jarring, and far from anything we expected to hear in the peaceful wilderness of Glacier National Park. Each shot felt like a thunderclap in the otherwise silent night, instantly flooding us with fear and confusion. The gunfire was soon accompanied by other unsettling sounds, an unsettling symphony of yelling blaring music, and sporadic bursts of gunfire that seemed to come from a source just across the river. The combination of noises painted a disturbing picture, one that we were not prepared to face during what was supposed to be a relaxing camping trip. Initially, we hoped that the commotion would die down quickly, perhaps a one-time event or a misunderstanding. However, as minutes turned into what felt like hours, and the chaotic sounds persisted, our unease grew exponentially. One comforting thought amidst the chaos was the realization that we were not alone in experiencing this ordeal. 
Other campers in neighboring sites were also stirred from their sleep, their murmurs and movements a testament to the shared sense of alarm and uncertainty. Despite the semblance of solidarity among campers, the reality of the situation weighed heavily on our minds. The closeness of the gunfire and the unpredictability of the situation posed a real threat to our safety. A stray bullet, a drunken misfire, or a misguided shot aimed in our direction could have turned the night from unnerving to tragic in an instant. The natural barrier of the river, while a picturesque feature during the day, felt insufficient in muffling the sounds of potential danger. Each gunshot felt uncomfortably close, a stark reminder of the thin line between adventure and peril in the great outdoors. Throughout the ordeal, adrenaline coursed through our veins, keeping us alert and hyper-aware of our surroundings. Sleep became a distant dream as we remained vigilant, listening intently for any change in the chaotic symphony echoing through the night. Thankfully, the perpetrators, whoever they were, seemed contained to their side of the forest and river. The relief of knowing they weren't encroaching on our immediate vicinity was overshadowed by the lingering tension and anxiety that gripped us throughout the restless night. Dawn broke slowly, casting a pale light over the campground and revealing the aftermath of a night filled with fear and uncertainty. The once serene and tranquil surroundings now bore the weight of the night's events, a stark reminder that even in nature's embrace, danger can lurk unexpectedly. As we packed up our campsite, a mixture of relief and apprehension lingered in the air. The usual banter and laughter of breaking camp were replaced by somber reflections on the night's ordeal. Conversations with fellow campers revealed shared experiences of fear and caution, highlighting the impact of that harrowing night on everyone present. Leaving Glacier National Park, we carried with us not just memories of breathtaking vistas and outdoor adventures but also a newfound respect for the need to prioritize safety in every outdoor excursion. The experience served as a sobering reminder that even in popular and well-known campgrounds, vigilance and preparedness are paramount. Since that night, we've approached camping trips with a renewed sense of caution and awareness. Safety protocols, communication within the camping group, and situational awareness have become non-negotiable aspects of our outdoor adventures. It's a lesson learned through first-hand experience, one that we hope never to forget as we continue exploring the great outdoors. The Olympic Mountains in Washington State, back in 2011. It was one of those adventures that starts with excitement and ends with your heart racing for all the wrong reasons. Now, before I dive in, let me make it clear, I'm not one to believe in Bigfoot or any of those mysterious creatures. I'm a rational person, or at least I thought I was until that night. So there I was, hiking a solid twelve miles from Brennan, Washington, deep into the heart of the Olympic rainforest. The air was thick with the scent of pine, and every step was like a dance with nature. Setting up my bivouac tent in that dense wilderness felt like a triumph. Little did I know, the night had a different plan for me. As darkness fell, the forest came alive with its nocturnal orchestra, owls hooting, small critters scurrying about, and the rustle of leaves in the breeze. I settled into my sleeping bag, feeling a mix of exhaustion and contentment, surrounded by nature's symphony. Then, around 3 a.m., it happened. At first, it was just distant movement, like something big making its way through the underbrush. I brushed it off, thinking it might be a bear or a deer, common sights in these parts. But then came the screams. Ape-like, but deeper, echoing through the trees with an eerie resonance. It's hard to describe the feeling that gripped me, a mix of confusion, fear, and disbelief. I lay frozen in my tent, every muscle tense, listening intently to those haunting sounds. Now, I'm no expert on animal calls, but this was like nothing I'd ever heard. It wasn't a bear growl or a cougar's cry. It was distinct, almost deliberate, like someone, or something, was trying to communicate. As the screams continued, sporadic yet unsettlingly consistent, my mind raced through possibilities. Was it a prank? Unlikely, given the remote location. Was it a known animal species? 
nothing matched up. Petrified would be an understatement. I felt vulnerable, isolated in the depths of the rainforest with an unknown entity just beyond the trees. It's amazing how the mind plays tricks in moments of fear, conjuring up all sorts of scenarios. The night dragged on, each passing minute feeling like an eternity. I wanted to believe it was a one-time occurrence, a fluke of nature. But the sounds persisted, punctuating the night with their primal intensity. As the first light of dawn filtered through the canopy, I made a snap decision. Fear and survival instinct took over. I abandoned my camping plans and packed up as quickly as I could. The thought of staying another night in that uncertainty was out of the question. The hike back felt different, tinged with a sense of urgency and lingering fear. I kept looking over my shoulder, half expecting to see something lurking in the shadows. But the forest remained silent, as if holding on to its secrets. Back in Brennan, as I sipped a steaming cup of coffee, I couldn't shake off the night's events. I'm not one to jump to conclusions or entertain wild theories, but something about those screams stuck with me. My feelings were conflicted. On one hand, I wanted to brush it off as a weird animal encounter, maybe a species I hadn't heard of before. On the other hand, the rational part of me struggled to find a logical explanation. It wasn't about believing in Bigfoot or any folklore creature. It was about confronting the unknown, facing a situation that defied easy explanation. And in that moment, out there in the Olympic rainforest, I couldn't wrap my head around what I experienced. To this day, I look back on that night with a mix of curiosity and trepidation. What was out there in the darkness? Was it a rare animal call, a natural phenomenon, or something beyond our understanding? I may never have a clear answer, and that's okay. Some mysteries are meant to remain unsolved, reminding us of the vastness and complexity of nature. But one thing is for sure, the night I heard those screams in the Olympic rainforest changed my perspective on the wild, leaving me with a newfound respect for the unseen forces that dwell in the depths of our natural world. One of my unforgettable adventures in the Smoky Mountains National Park. It was a sunny day, perfect for hiking along the park's rugged trails little did I know. It would turn into an adrenaline-pumping experience with some of the park's most iconic residents, bears. As I set out on the trail that day, the air was crisp, and the scent of pine filled my lungs. The trail started out easy, but soon it descended into a steep path with rocky sides that made my palms sweat. I was cautious but excited, eager to soak in the beauty of the forest. About halfway down the trail, I turned a bend and froze. There, making their way up the trail towards me, was a family of bears. My heart raced as I took in the scene, Mama Bear followed by her adorable cubs, oblivious to my presence. Now I've read enough about bears to know that encountering them on a narrow trail is not ideal. I didn't want to startle them or, worse, find myself between a protective mom and her babies. Without hesitation, I started walking backward keeping my eyes on the bears ahead. It was a slow and nerve-wracking half-mile retreat, with every step feeling like a lifetime. I kept a safe distance, not wanting to provoke any reaction from the bears. As I hiked backward, my mind raced through scenarios. What if they got startled? What if they decided to investigate me more closely? The thought of a bear encounter was both thrilling and terrifying. Finally, I found a wider spot off the trail where I could safely step aside and let the bears pass. My heart pounded in my chest as they lumbered by the mother bear casting a cautious glance in my direction. I held my breath, hoping they would continue on their way without incident. And they did, disappearing around a bend as I let out a sigh of relief. That encounter left me both exhilarated and cautious. I continued my hike, now hyper-aware of every rustle in the bushes and every snap of a twig. Little did I know, another bear encounter awaited me on a different hiking trip in the Smokies. On a sunny afternoon, I embarked on a new trail, eager to explore more of the park's beauty. The trail meandered through dense forest, 
with occasional openings that offered breathtaking views of the surrounding mountains. As I rounded a bend, my eyes caught movement ahead, a cub, perched high in a tree, its curiosity piqued by my presence. My heart skipped a beat as I froze, knowing that where there's a cub, Mama Bear is usually nearby. I scanned the area, searching for any signs of a larger bear. And then, as if on cue, there she was, Mama Bear, standing about twenty feet up the hillside, her gaze fixed on me. It was a tense moment, a silent standoff between human and bear. I knew better than to make sudden movements or show any signs of aggression. Instead, I stood still, assessing the situation and planning my next move. The mama bear seemed curious yet cautious. Her ears perked up as she gauged my intentions. Slowly, I started to back away, keeping my eyes on her but also scanning the surroundings for any escape routes. She watched me intently, her powerful presence a reminder of the wildness of these creatures. Bears are majestic but also formidable, and I respected that boundary as I retraced my steps down the trail. Every step backward felt like a victory, a careful dance of respect and caution. I didn't want to trigger any defensive instincts in the bear, and thankfully, she allowed me to retreat without incident. As I reached a safe distance, I let out a sigh of relief, my heart still racing from the close encounter. It was the closest I had ever been to a bear in the wild, and the experience left me with a mix of awe and humility. The rest of the hike back was uneventful but introspective. I reflected on the delicate balance between human presence and wildlife in these protected areas. Encountering bears in their natural habitat was a privilege, but it also came with responsibilities, to tread lightly, to respect boundaries, and to always be prepared for the unexpected. That evening, as I sat by the campfire, I recounted my bear encounters to fellow hikers, each retelling adding a layer of excitement and respect for these magnificent animals. The Smoky Mountains had given me not just scenic beauty but also valuable lessons in coexisting with nature and all its wild glory. A scorching day out in the New Mexico desert, and I was on a mission to explore some ancient petroglyphs tucked away on a private ranch. The landscape was like something out of a movie, dry, dusty, with cacti standing tall and rocks scattered everywhere. But amidst all that beauty, I couldn't shake off the thought of snakes. Snakes, especially rattlesnakes, are no joke in the desert. So, as I walked, my eyes were glued to the ground, scanning for any signs of danger. Every crunch of gravel under my boots made me jump a little, imagining a slithery surprise. I reached a tricky part of the trail, where the path narrowed between boulders and spiky bushes. I took each step carefully, trying not to disturb the desert too much. But then, just as I was about to put my foot down, I heard it, the unmistakable rattle of a snake. Time froze. My heart raced, and I looked down to see a huge rattlesnake coiled up, ready to strike, just inches from my foot. Panic set in and I spun around so fast that I lost my balance. The ground beneath me was unforgiving, a mix of loose rocks, prickly bushes, and unfriendly cacti. I tumbled down the hillside like a rag doll, bouncing off rocks and getting scratched up by thorns. It was chaos, pain, and fear all rolled into one terrifying moment. Each roll and bump felt like a punch, and I couldn't do much except brace myself and hope it would end soon. When I finally came to a stop at the bottom, I lay there, dazed and hurting, trying to process what had just happened. The first thing I noticed was the pain. Sharp stings from cactus spines made me wince as I slowly sat up. I checked myself for any serious injuries, relieved to find nothing broken, just a lot of cuts, bruises, and a newfound respect for gravity. Looking around, I realized I was in the middle of nowhere surrounded by desert shrubs and rocks. The rattlesnake was nowhere to be seen, probably slithered off during my chaotic descent. I tried to stand up, but my legs felt like jelly, so I took a moment to catch my breath and gather my thoughts. The sun was starting its slow descent,
casting long shadows across the desert. It was both beautiful and eerie, knowing that darkness in the desert brings its own set of challenges. With a deep breath, I decided to climb back up to where I started. It was easier said than done. Every step was painful, and I had to be extra cautious not to slip on loose gravel or get snagged by thorny bushes. As I climbed, I couldn't help but replay the moment of encountering the rattlesnake in my mind. It was like a scene from a survival show, except this was real life, and there was no camera crew to rescue me. The climb felt like forever, each rock and thorn a reminder of my misstep. But finally, after what seemed like hours but was probably much less, I reached the top. I collapsed onto a flat rock, panting and sweaty but also immensely relieved. From my vantage point, I could see the petroglyph site in the distance, a small speck against the vast desert backdrop. It was a reminder of why I came here in the first place, a glimpse into ancient history and the resilience of people in harsh environments. As the sky painted itself in hues of orange and pink, I couldn't help but feel a mix of emotions, gratitude for being safe, humility in the face of nature's power and a newfound respect for the desert and its inhabitants, snakes included. Eventually, I gathered enough strength to make my way back to my starting point. The hike back was slow, every step a reminder of the adventure I had just survived. But with each step, I also felt a sense of accomplishment and a story to tell, one of caution, resilience, and the unpredictable beauty of the desert. Back at camp, I tended to my wounds cleaned up and sat by the dying embers of my campfire, staring up at the star-studded desert sky. The night was quiet, peaceful even, a stark contrast to the chaos of earlier. As I lay in my tent, listening to the desert night sounds, I couldn't help but replay the day's events in my mind. It was a reminder that even in our carefully planned adventures, nature has its own plans and we must always be ready for the unexpected. And although I'll always remember that terrifying encounter with the rattlesnake and the tumble down the hill, it also taught me valuable lessons about resilience, respect for nature, and the importance of being prepared in the great outdoors. A few years ago, my dad and I decided to go camping deep in the Canadian wilderness. It was no easy task to get there. First, we had to ride an ATV for two hours, and then we drove another 45 minutes in a car just to reach the nearest town. But the adventure was worth it, or so we thought. Once we arrived, we set up our tents. It was exciting to be surrounded by such a vast and untouched landscape, far away from the hustle and bustle of city life. Little did I know that our peaceful night under the stars would turn into a nerve-wracking ordeal. Late into the night, when darkness had settled around us like a heavy blanket, I was suddenly jolted awake by strange noises. It sounded like creatures sniffing, and there were a lot of them, maybe five or more. Panic surged through me, and I felt a shiver run down my spine. The tent suddenly felt too small, almost suffocating. Being in a tiny one-person tent made me feel exposed and vulnerable. I listened intently trying to figure out what kind of creatures could be lurking outside. My mind raced with possibilities. Were they bears, wolves, or something else entirely? As the sniffing continued, I lay there frozen, not daring to move or make a sound. The minutes stretched into what felt like hours, the tension in the air palpable. I couldn't understand why the creatures were sniffing around for so long without doing anything else. Were they trying to find food, or were they just curious? The sounds eventually stopped, leaving behind an eerie silence that was almost as unsettling as the noises themselves. I strained my ears, waiting for any sign of movement or danger, but everything remained still. Exhausted from fear and adrenaline, I eventually managed to drift back to sleep, though it was a fitful and uneasy rest. Morning brought a mix of relief and lingering unease. I cautiously unzipped the tent, half expecting to see signs of the nocturnal visitors, a paw print, a torn piece of fabric, but there was nothing. The forest around us seemed undisturbed, 
as if the events of the night were nothing more than a bad dream. Doubt crept in as we went about our morning routine. Had I imagined it all? The vividness of the experience made it hard to believe it was just a dream. I tried to brush it off, not wanting to worry my dad or ruin the rest of our camping trip. Throughout the day, however, my mind kept returning to that unsettling night. I couldn't shake off the feeling of unease and unanswered questions. What were those creatures, and why did they sniff around our camp for so long before disappearing without a trace? The rest of our camping trip passed without incident, but the memory of that night lingered like a shadow. Back home, I couldn't help but research local wildlife, trying to match the sounds I heard with known animal behaviors. But the more I searched, the more uncertain I became. It seemed like there was no clear answer to what had happened that night. Years have passed since that camping trip, but the memory still sends a shiver down my spine. It wasn't a ghostly encounter or a supernatural event. It was a real, raw experience of fear and uncertainty in the wilderness. The unknown can be just as terrifying as any ghost story, reminding us that nature holds mysteries that we may never fully understand. Despite the unease it caused, that experience also taught me valuable lessons about respecting nature's power and unpredictability. I've become more cautious and attentive during outdoor adventures, always mindful of the unseen dangers that may lurk in the wild. Looking back, I can't say for sure what those creatures were or why they sniffed around our camp that night. Maybe it was just a curious group of animals, or perhaps it was a figment of my imagination heightened by the isolation of the wilderness. Whatever the case, it remains a vivid and haunting memory, one that reminds me of the thin line between adventure and apprehension in the great outdoors. I remember vividly the camping trip when I was six years old. It was a family affair, with my mom, dad, auntie, uncle, cousins, and their parents all gathered for a fun outdoor adventure. During the day, we explored the woods, hung out near the fire pit, and indulged in classic camping treats like grilled hot dogs. It was all fun and games until nightfall cast a different tone over our campsite. As darkness settled around us, my uncle decided to share a scary story slash song with me before bedtime. He chose the teddy bear's picnic song but delivered it in a creepy, mysterious voice, using a flashlight to cast eerie shadows on his face. He even mimicked bear-like scratching on trees and in the air, setting a spooky atmosphere that sent shivers down my spine. The lyrics, usually innocent, took on a chilling aura in the dim light of the campfire. If you go down in the woods today, you're sure of a big surprise if you go down in the woods today. You'd better go in disguise for every bear that ever there was will gather there for certain because today's the day the teddy bears have their picnic. Being only six, my imagination ran wild. The darkness seemed deeper, and every rustle in the bushes sounded like a lurking bear. My fears were further amplified when my mom screamed due to bats flying nearby, adding to the night's tension. Terrified that a bear might actually come for me, I clung to my dad's hunting knife, though its presence did little to ease my mind. Every sound outside the tent made me jump, imagining it to be the footsteps of a bear. Even when my parents finally joined me in the tent, I mistook their movements for a bear's approach. Throughout that camping trip, I struggled to sleep, haunted by the song and the imagined threat of bears. My uncle's nightly rendition of the teddy bear's picnic song didn't help either, reinforcing my fears each evening. Years passed, and I remained wary of camping trips, always associating them with that traumatic experience. However, as I grew older, around twelve years old, something shifted. I started to see the irrationality of my fears. Bears weren't lurking around every corner, and camping wasn't synonymous with impending danger. One day, I decided to confront my fear head-on. I joined another camping trip, determined to enjoy the experience without letting old fears hold me back. Surrounded by nature's beauty and the warmth of a crackling campfire, I realized how much I had missed out on by letting fear dictate my adventures. Now, as an adult looking back, 
I chuckle at how a simple song and a child's imagination could create such lasting fear. I've not only overcome my fear of camping but have grown to love it. The thrill of being in the great outdoors, surrounded by nature's wonders, far outweighs the childhood fears that once held me back. Today, I find joy in camping trips, sharing stories around the fire, and immersing myself in the tranquility of nature. The experience taught me resilience and the importance of confronting fears rather than letting them control me. And yes, I still enjoy a good true crime, horror, or mystery movie, but now they are just entertainment, not triggers of old fears. Day started off great, with clear skies and a sense of adventure in the air. However, nature had other plans, and as evening approached, dark clouds rolled in, unleashing a relentless downpour that seemed to soak everything in its path. As the rain poured down like it was trying to set a world record, I found myself seeking refuge in the natural caves nearby. These caves weren't your typical tourist attractions. They were rugged, untouched by modern amenities, and each had its own unique character. Surveying my options, I settled on the largest cave, thinking it would offer the most space and protection from the elements. Little did I know that my choice would lead to a night filled with unexpected twists and turns. The storm outside was no joke. It rained cats and dogs, and the wind howled like it was angry at the world. This wasn't your gentle breeze. It was a force to be reckoned with, finding its way through the smallest gaps and cracks in the cave walls, creating eerie whistling and shrieking sounds that echoed ominously. The sound of the wind combined with the relentless drumming of rain on the cave entrance, created a natural symphony that ranged from haunting to downright spooky. It felt like I was in the middle of a suspenseful movie, with nature as the masterful composer of fear-inducing melodies. Despite the cacophony of sounds outside, the cave provided a semblance of shelter. But that wasn't the end of the surprises for the night. As I settled in, trying to make the best of the situation— I realized I had company, unwelcome company, to be precise. Large mice, probably seeking shelter from the storm like me, scurried around the cave floor, their tiny feet making surprisingly loud noises in the enclosed space. I'm not particularly fond of rodents, so their presence added an extra layer of discomfort to an already tense situation. And then there were the spiders, nature's architects of fear for many. They had taken up residence in various corners of the cave, their webs glistening in the faint light that filtered through the entrance. Every rustle or movement sent my heart racing, imagining all sorts of worst-case scenarios involving eight-legged creatures. Despite the eerie ambience and unwelcome guests, I tried to keep calm, reminding myself that I was safer inside the cave than braving the storm outside. The crashes and thuds from the relentless storm hinted at the chaos unfolding beyond the cave walls, but I chose to stay put, hoping for the best. The night was long, filled with moments of tense silence punctuated by nature's symphony of fury. Sleep was elusive, my mind too wired with adrenaline and anticipation of what the storm might bring next. Morning brought a faint light that gradually illuminated the cave's interior. With cautious optimism, I peeked outside, half expecting scenes of destruction. What I saw, however, left me stunned and grateful in equal measure. The cave next to mine, one I had considered but ultimately passed over due to its smaller size, was completely blocked by a landslide. Rocks and debris lay scattered, sealing off the entrance as if nature had decided to play a game of natural barriers. The realization hit me hard. I had narrowly escaped being trapped in a cave by sheer luck. The storm, fierce as it was, had inadvertently shielded me from a more immediate danger that lay just beside me. As I gathered my belongings and prepared to leave, a mix of emotions flooded through me. Gratitude for being safe mingled with a deep respect for nature's power. It was a humbling experience, a reminder that in the wild, every decision counts even the seemingly mundane ones like choosing a cave for shelter. That camping trip left an indelible mark on me, not just for the adrenaline-fueled moments, but also for the lessons learned. 
Nature's unpredictability is a force to be reckoned with, and humility in its presence is a lesson best learned firsthand. Since then, I approach outdoor adventures with a blend of excitement and caution, always mindful of nature's whims and prepared for unexpected challenges. It wasn't just a night of stormy weather and creepy cave dwellers. It was a journey of survival and introspection, one that continues to shape my outdoor experiences to this day. Tent camping in Yellowstone National Park was a dream come true for me, a chance to immerse myself in nature's grandeur and witness wildlife up close. Little did I know that my adventure would take an unexpected turn during elk mating season, leaving me with memories that still send shivers down my spine. The campground nestled within Yellowstone's vast expanse felt like a haven of tranquility during the day. Families and friends gathered around crackling campfires, swapping stories, and relishing the simplicity of outdoor living. The surrounding landscape painted a picture of serene beauty, with majestic trees swaying gently in the breeze and distant mountain peaks peeking through the horizon. As night descended, the campground transformed into a different realm. The usual chirping of crickets and rustling leaves took on a deeper resonance, echoing through the stillness of the night. I settled into my tent, cocooned in my sleeping bag, feeling both excitement and contentment at the prospect of a night under the starlit sky. However, nature had its own plans, and the night took an unexpected turn. Around 2 a.m., I found myself entangled in a nightmare straight out of a thriller movie. In my dream, a thunderous stampede of elk charged through the campground, their powerful hooves shaking the ground beneath me. The air was filled with urgency, as if something primal and unstoppable was surging through the night. Just as the nightmare reached its crescendo, I was abruptly yanked from sleep by a piercing bugling sound, an elk's call that cut through the darkness like a knife. My heart raced, and for a moment, I couldn't discern dream from reality. Had the elk stampede from my nightmare transcended into the real world? The bugling continued, echoing across the campground and mingling with the sounds of movement in the distance. Tentatively, I unzipped the tent, peering out into the night with a mixture of fear and fascination. The darkness seemed alive, teeming with unseen mysteries and untold stories. As I strained my senses, the symphony of the night unfolded before me. The rhythmic thud of hooves on the earth, the rustling of bushes as large bodies moved through the undergrowth, and the occasional bugling that seemed to communicate secrets of the wild, all merged into a surreal experience that sent chills down my spine. Part of me wanted to retreat into the safety of my tent, to block out the unknown and cling to the familiarity of human-made structures. Yet another part, the adventurous, curious part, urged me to stay, to witness nature's spectacle firsthand. I sat there for what felt like hours, enveloped in the night's embrace, a silent witness to nature's untamed beauty. The ground trembled slightly beneath me, each vibration a testament to the raw power of the creatures moving in the darkness. It was a reminder that despite our advancements, nature still held dominion over these wild spaces. As the night wore on, the sounds gradually receded into the distance, the elk moving on their nocturnal journey through the park. Dawn broke with hues of soft pink and gold, casting a gentle glow over the landscape. Emerging from my tent, I surveyed the surroundings, half expecting to see traces of the nighttime drama. To my surprise, there were no visible signs of the elk stampede that had seemed so real just hours ago. No hoof prints etched into the soft earth, no disturbances in the vegetation, just the quiet serenity of Yellowstone at dawn. Reflecting on the experience, I couldn't shake off the surreal blend of dream and reality. Had the elk stampede actually happened, or was it a vivid manifestation of my imagination fueled by the bugling calls? I may never know for sure, and perhaps that's part of the magic of wilderness encounters. They blur the lines between what we perceive as real and what we dare to imagine. Despite the initial fear and uncertainty, the night at Yellowstone during elk mating season left an indelible mark on me. It was a reminder of nature's raw power and untamed beauty, 
a humbling experience that nudged me closer to the rhythms of the natural world. In the years since that camping trip, I've returned to Yellowstone, drawn by its allure and the memories it holds. Elk bugles no longer evoke fear but rather a sense of connection, a reminder of that unforgettable night when nature spoke in its own mysterious language, leaving me both awestruck and humbled. Camping, once tinged with apprehension, has become a cherished adventure, a journey into the heart of wilderness where every rustle and call carries a story waiting to be heard. And as I gaze up at the starlit sky from my tent, I find solace in the untamed beauty that surrounds me, grateful for nights that blur the boundaries between dreams and the wild realities of Yellowstone National Park. I had deep love for nature and adventure. One of my favorite things to do was to visit my grandparents' property, which was tucked away in a remote area surrounded by dense woods. The vastness of the property allowed me to wander freely and discover hidden nooks and crannies that sparked my curiosity. It became a tradition for me to venture out alone, find a spot in the woods, and spend the night camping under the stars. Now my dad, like many dads, had a knack for storytelling. He once mentioned an old farmstead that supposedly existed nearby ages ago. The idea of exploring remnants of the past added an extra layer of excitement to my solo camping expeditions. However, I always took his stories with a grain of salt, unsure of their accuracy but enjoying the thrill they added to my outdoor adventures. One particular camping trip stands out vividly in my memory, a night filled with a blend of wonder and unease that left me questioning the boundaries between dreams and reality. It was a typical setup for me. I found a cozy spot in the woods, gathered branches and leaves to create a half-faced brush shelter, and settled in for the night. The familiar sounds of the forest, the rustle of leaves, the distant calls of nocturnal creatures, wrapped around me like a comforting blanket as I drifted into sleep. As the night progressed, I slipped into a deep slumber, unaware of the subtle shifts in the surrounding wilderness. It must have been around 2 a.m. when my mind conjured up a vivid nightmare, one that felt all too real in the moment. In my dream, a thunderous stampede of elk charged through the woods, their hooves pounding the earth with a rhythmic intensity. The ground shook beneath me, and the air filled with a sense of urgency and wildness that sent a chill down my spine. It was a primal scene, straight out of nature's untamed symphony. Just as the dream reached its crescendo, I was abruptly awakened by a haunting bugling sound, an elk's call cutting through the night with piercing clarity. My eyes shot open, heart racing as I tried to reconcile the dream with reality. Had the stampede crossed over from the realm of dreams into the physical world? The transition from dream to wakefulness was disorienting. I lay there in my sleeping bag, the thin blanket pulled over my face as I peered through its fabric. The soft glow of dawn was just beginning to filter through the trees, casting gentle light around me. And then I saw them, or at least I thought I did. Two shadowy figures stood outside my makeshift shelter, their forms partially obscured by the dim morning light. They appeared to be men, dressed in attire reminiscent of olden days, wide-brim hats that settlers might have worn, not the typical cowboy hats seen in movies. My heart skipped a beat as a mix of fear and curiosity gripped me. Were these real people? Had someone stumbled upon my campsite in the early hours of the morning? Or was it a continuation of my dream, bleeding into reality in a surreal blend? I held my breath, watching intently as the figures remained motionless, their gaze fixed on me, or so it seemed. The silence of the woods amplified every rustle of leaves, every whisper of the wind creating an eerie backdrop to this unexpected encounter. Summoning courage, I slowly lowered the blanket, expecting the figures to vanish into thin air. But as the fabric cleared my vision, there was nothing, just the empty space outside my shelter, bathed in the soft morning light. No footsteps, no lingering presence, just a lingering sense of unease. I sat there for a while, processing what had just occurred. Was it a trick of the mind, a lingering effect of the intense dream I had just experienced? Or had I witnessed something beyond explanation, 
an encounter with echoes of the past, perhaps linked to the old farmstead my dad had mentioned? After some time, I mustered the courage to step outside, surveying the area for any signs of recent visitors. The forest stood serene and undisturbed, as if mocking my confusion. There were no footprints, no traces of human presence beyond my own campsite. With a mix of relief and lingering curiosity, I packed up my gear, the events of the night replaying in my mind like scenes from a suspenseful movie. As I hiked back to civilization, the woods gradually receded, but the memory of that surreal morning stayed with me. In the days and weeks that followed, I couldn't shake off the experience. I shared the story with friends and family, each retelling adding layers of speculation and wonder. Some dismissed it as a trick of the imagination, while others entertained the idea of a ghostly encounter or a glimpse into a parallel reality. For me, it remained a mystery, a moment where the lines between dream and reality, past and present, blurred in the quiet depths of the wilderness. Whether it was a manifestation of my subconscious or a brief glimpse into something inexplicable, I may never know for certain. Years have passed since that camping trip, and I've continued to explore the great outdoors with a newfound respect for the unknown. The woods hold secrets beyond our comprehension, reminders that nature's mysteries are vast and ever-present. And while I may never fully unravel the truth behind that surreal morning, it serves as a testament to the enigmatic beauty of the natural world and the endless stories it has yet to reveal.